This is the 2019 Ford F-150 Raptor. Today we are with our friends at Chuck's Faith Ford in beautiful New Ulm, Minnesota. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys in a ride. ride. Say, if you want to keep up to date on all the new cars, trucks, and SUVs, and you want to know all the cool new vehicle technologies, and you'd like to hear some cool collector car stories, take a second to hit that subscribe button below and ring that bell notification so you never miss a video. So what do you say, Nathan? Let's, Let's go, go for a ride. ride. Oh, I tell you, I, I've had a little chance to drive it. And um, right now the auto starts, uh, auto start stop features on and uh, that works very effectively. As soon as you let your foot off the brake, the motor restarts, which I like instead of having some cars just when you press the accelerator and I, I like it. Oh, it sure, yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, boy, does it have some, it, it has some torque. Holy schmoly. <laughs> The seats, the seats are really comfortable. Yeah, I, are. I, I really like the seats. Um, you know, 10 way power on each side. They're nicely bolstered. Um, plenty of wide. It's, it's a, you know, it's a big truck. It has uh, three different modes for the steering. You have normal sport and comfort. Uh, so it tightens up different things in the steering for the handling. Um, several different modes for um, the drive modes. You, you can hear the exhaust in this one too <laughs> when you step on a little bit. You know, the, the, the headroom and the legroom on, on this particular truck is just, uh, it's, yeah, it's huge. You know, for it to be an off road truck, I know we're on a city street, so yeah. it's a pretty nice street anyway, but it, it rides nice. It's not beating you. It, I mean, again, a truck too, if you don't have anything in the, in the back bed tends to ride a little more rough too because the way they their springs are yeah but this is even more aggressive and i feel like you set up a little you do set up actually yeah, a, a little, little bit, bit higher, higher with than that, a you know, regular f-150 yeah, you do there's a little bit there's a, a little bit of a lift there yep and of course this truck is just full of attitude but inside it, it is it's this is luxurious it's kind of it's really nice now the one thing i was telling nathan earlier that if you were doing some serious off-roading you do have these leather seats and just a little strip on each side by the bolster on the on the bottom and the top the back seat you have a little bit of cloth but i would like to see some um some cloth inserts to help hold you in place if you're doing some serious off-roading. Um, but no, the, the, the fit and finish in here, I, I really like it. Everything seems to line up really nicely. Boy, I'll tell you, we've driven some good sounding vehicles lately. Oh, this is another one of them. Yep, it is. There's a distinctive you. sound there. Yeah, so I, I mean, I really like this. This is... I think Ford's done a really nice job. I mean, you do have a commanding view of the road. Yeah. You know, one of the one of the things that I that I did not show in my inside review is that this has inflatable rear seat belts, so they're like an airbag, which uh, pickups are starting to go to. I like that on the fuel gauge, you don't have to push a lot of buttons to see how many miles to empty. That's kind of cool. It just displays it right above there, just as a, an informa point of information. I like that. You know, for a uh, truck, yeah, the power steering is just perfectly balanced. I like it. It's not over boosted. You can feel the road, uh, but it is. It makes it. I, I, I'm turning with two fingers here. It makes it extremely easy to turn. I like these back seats. I, I mean, the, these these supercabs are, are so large right 
and it's comfortable. I mean, we're in driving in a, a serious off-road vehicle, and this is this is comfortable for everyday driving. What I like is the red stripe on the top of the steering wheel to help center your wheels because that's extremely important if you're doing off-roading. If you get some air, you want to know how your wheels are and how your steering wheel is turned if you're going to come back down and land. Very comfortable. Love it. Uh, Nathan, we're going to try the brakes here if you okay. want to hold on. Whoa. Whew. Wow. She grabs. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is very nice. I really do like, I think it's a it's a nice driving vehicle. Absolutely. And yeah. if you're in the market for a serious off-roading vehicle, but you don't want to beat yourself up on the way to that trail, uh, this is extremely comfortable. I can imagine this thing cruising down the highway, 65, 70, 80 miles an hour in some parts of the country, uh, would just be absolutely comfortable getting you to that trailhead. Yes. And then a lot of fun on the trail. Oh, heck yeah. Well, that's when the fun begins. They've put a lot of thought <coughs> into this, and uh, yeah, it's cool. I like it. Oh, man. And that it's is... hard to say something bad about that. <laughs> well, here we go, folks. We're going to take it back to the dealer. Sadly, wipe your eyes, Nathan. I know I he's know. Uh, get sobbing a little bit back there, but... Uh, well, that's it, folks. Here we go, and our uh, outside and inside review is coming right up. Today's leaner, meaner 2019 Raptor is nearly 500 pounds lighter than the previous generation with its high-strength military-grade aluminum alloy body. High-output twin-turbo intercooled double overhead cam 24-valve 3.5-liter EcoBoost engine with port fuel and direct injection paired with a 10-speed automatic transmission generates a massive 450 horsepower and 510 pound-foot of torque. Now the Raptor's price range is from starts at 52855 and I went online to the Ford website and added everything I could find. There may have been a few things I missed. Uh, and it stickered out at 79,932, so quite a spread there. On the front end, you see quad beam headlights, and out back there are LED tail lights with black surround. You do have auto lamp, automatic on off headlights with rain lamp wiper activated headlights, daytime running lights, integrated marker lights. You have front end uh, tow hook, you have two of them. And on the grill, you have the unique Ford block letters. And you see the front end camera here as well. And it has a little washer nozzle, which we've come to uh, really like. Now on the front end, you have a performance bumper that, uh, in an accent color. And you see the chrome skid plate underneath. Now this does have functioning, functioning hood with air extractors up top. You have flared fenders with functioning air extractors. You had the skid plate, heavy duty front engine, and on the side mirrors you had heated auto dimming feature on the driver's side. Now the wheels are 17 inch cast wheels with high gloss machine faced and magnetic painted pockets. Riding on 31570 uh, R17 BF Goodrich all-terrain TA KO2 tires. You do have the wheel lip moldings and a unique accent color. LED mounted mirror spotlights. Running boards are cast aluminum. You have out back, you have the rear window power sliding glass with privacy tint and defroster. This is a five and a half foot cargo bed. It does have an easy soft drop uh, tailgate on it. Cargo box inside length is 67.1 inches. Width between the wheelhouses is 50.6 inches. The inside height 21.4 inches with a total cargo box volume 52.8 inches. You do have inside the remote tailgate release. You do have the uh, Unique accent color tailgate applique, tailgate step with liftgate assist, and you see that in a, uh, it does have a foldable uh, pickup box bed extender, that which is optional. We don't have that on this particular vehicle. Let me put this back up, and you can see the rear view camera 
with the dynamic hitch assist. It does have dual exhaust and dual tailpipes under the rear bumper and you see the hitch and the four pin connectors and you also see the tow hooks out back. Pretty awesome, pretty stout looking too. I mean, I, I gotta think uh, you're not gonna have any issues. You have a boxed high strength steel frame, independent double wishbone with coil over and cast aluminum lower control arms, fully long travel suspension with unique front upper and lower control arms and tie rods. You also have the high output off-road Fox live valve racing shocks. This vehicle does come with terrain management with six selectable drive modes. Has a 410 front axle with torsion differential. Springs or rear leaf, two-stage variable rate. This vehicle does have, for safety, advanced track with roll stability control, curved control, four-wheel anti-lock brakes, blind spot information with cross-traffic alert, and SOS post-crash alert system. There is a 36-gallon fuel tank. Fuel economy is 15 city, 18 highway, 16 combined. Now, this is the Super Crew, so the wheelbase is 146.6 inches, overall length 231.9 inches, cab height 78.5 inches, the width with the mirrors is 96.8 inches, with those mirrors extended. Give you a look from the front end here, you can see that. So that's 96.8 inches. Now the angle of approach on the front end, 30.2 degrees, so very short overhang there, and the bumpers as you see are cut upwards to give you a little bit more uh, easier uh, approach angle. The departure angle on the back side is 23 degrees, and the ramp breakover angle, 21 degrees. Ground clearance on this vehicle is 11.5 inches. Base curb weight is 5,525 pounds. Towing up to 8,000 pounds with a maximum payload of 1,200 pounds. As far as the styling, you can definitely tell it is an F-150. However, they've really added some really cool, unique features. Headlights are pretty much the same, but I do like the additional lights here in the grill. I do like the big block Ford letters on there as well. Of course, the air vents, it's really cool when they see, you see those on a vehicle, but then to know that they're actually functioning, that's even cooler. I like that. Um, it does, again, like I said, have the resemblance of the Ford F-150 body, and that's cool but it does have some unique features like this huge exhaust pipes out back, the tow hooks, and then the big Ford applique on the back, with of course, letting everyone know that sees it from behind, because that's where most people are gonna see this vehicle anyway, uh, you see the big Raptor logo on the back and the tail end. That's just to let them know what just left them in the dust. As far as styling goes on this vehicle, I like the cut lines here. I love this hip line right here. It goes right over. It could be just a flat sap, slab side, but it's not. It's really nice. I like on the tail lights back here. Ford has this big exaggerated cut to mimic the tail lights, and you see the uh, the uh, turn signals going there, and you see the LED lights, and you can see the cross traffic alert system. Now on this, we've kind of introduced kind of a, a new. Uh, it's, it's subjective, some of it, but part of it's actual factual. Actual factual. You like that, David? I like that. <laughs> actually factual uh, but we've we're introducing kind of a scale to uh, rank the vehicles and it's based on safety price appearance dependability and economy so anyway on the safety the IIHS rates this vehicle uh, there are four uh, modes there's a good acceptable marginal and poor and this is definitely rated at good Price, like I said, it ranges from start of $52,855 to $79,932. Appearance, purely subjective. It's on your own opinion and on our opinion, we think it's a home run. It's awesome looking. It definitely sets it apart from other more pedestrian uh, commercial vehicles or just plain pickup trucks, and we love that. Dependability, it's a Ford. It's an F-150. Uh, built solid, you can't get much better than that. Uh, economy is our last judge and again 15 city 18 highway 16 combined 
you've got a big giant vehicle here with 450 horsepower 510 feet of torque you've got to expect that's what your economy is going to be but it's made for off-road it's made for trails and it's going to keep you uh, through the mud and out of trouble and get you home safe at the end of the day so you can't complain about the economy on that that's what you're buying here so i know nathan is absolutely chomping at the bit to get in here and give you a review of the inside so uh i don't know but we're out by the river so i don't know if he's gone swimming or not but uh, oh no oh okay I'm well right i was here. gonna jump inside and show people the the I'm radio for someone to quit yicky <laughs> all right all right, so what do you say, Nathan? Take it away. All right, come on inside. Let's... On the inside of the 2019 Ford Raptor, on the driver's side, uh, you do have ample storage down here below, a big long section right here, about uh, half a hands, uh, half hand deep. More storage here, and then like a bottle holder up in here. You're gonna see one of the Bang & Olufsen speakers that this vehicle comes with. What a great sound system. I was, I was listening to it on the ride over here, and whoa, wow, wow, wow. Um, okay, your unlock buttons, uh, three-person memory settings, and then up here, you've got all uh, auto windows, and then this is your power fold, this is your window lockout, and then left and right mirror controls. I do like the cutout right here for visibility, and I do like the extra little trim piece in here. It is a squeeze handle, like other uh, F-150s here, to open the door, and then you do have space to have a grab-through, which is one of my favorite things. I really like those. All right, over here we have a 10-way power seat, including uh, two-position lumbar. So you have a forward and backwards, then you can tilt the just the front up or down, then of course the whole seat up or down, and then your back of your seat can tilt forward or backwards, and then a two-position lumbar. The seats themselves are leather, and they are really, really nice. They do, they do come with a Raptor part stitched in, and uh, they're really nice. Uh, very, very, very comfortable seats. You can see that the passenger seat has the same logo on it. Hey, okay. over here is your emergency brake pull on, and then this does come with power pedals, so you can adjust your foot feet. And then coming up here, uh, you have, of course, uh, auto lamps, and you have uh, your rear light in the back of the pickup bed to turn on or off, and then you can brighten or dim your dashboard lights with these two switches. Now, coming up here, each of the mirrors uh, has a LED light on the outside of it that you can actually manually turn on right here and right here, passenger side and driver's side. So I'll show you a little clip of that. Okay, and then of course I did, this is your trunk release right here. I, I'm a fan of this side storage on the side of the consoles and the Raptor has them on both sides. And I really like that. And, and it's a little wider down here in the Raptor, a little bit bigger. Hey, okay, let's uh, let's get in the vehicle and give it a start. All right, so here we can give it a start. It is a push start. I like that Bill Ford tough screen. I like that. On the left, you have an analog RPM gauge. The little window right here is interesting. It doesn't actually light up anything until you put it into gear and then you can see your 10 gears. So it allows it even in, in drive to see the uh, the gear that you're in. And if you put in manual, you can of course paddle shift and it will show you. Of course, it doesn't want to shift out a second because I'm not moving. And then on the right, you have an analog speedometer. And then in the middle, you have this really, really nice um, LCD screen. Let's zoom in a minute. Let me refocus. I do like the way that uh, Ford has organized this. So on the top, you have got up here, you have got all of your basic gauges. But then just below that, instead of making you go to a separate menu with a button to make these appear, Ford leaves these hanging out right in view. All these little tabs. And I think that's nice. I think it makes it easy to, to see what you can get to. Backing up a little bit, you've got some steering controls. Right. On the left, you've got the cursor buttons and the OK button that control the driver's information center. Below that, on the left, you've got your cruise control buttons. On, off, cancel, resume, set, and then, of course, increase or decrease your cruise control speed. And then right here, you have a button that you can increase or decrease the gap of your adaptive cruise control. 
Okay, moving over to the right side of the steering wheel, you have uh, media controls, so you have volume up and down, left or right arrows to either scan right, scan left, uh, radio stations, uh, switch modes, um, or scan through modes. This has voice command navigation, so that button's right there. Down below here, you have a mute button. You have your steering mode selector. You have your phone on, phone off, and then your mode buttons for driving. All right behind that, you of course have your paddle shifters, and the um, Raptor comes with big, heavy-duty metal ones. They, 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 they feel really good in your hands. I, I really like those. They're just, they're really long. They come all the way through the bottom there. All right, moving on over. Um, I really like the dash. You got soft touch materials in here with the stitch look. You've got a nice center storage tray right here. This is part of the Bang & Olufsen sound system. And then uh, again, soft touch on this side. Okay. Coming back, you have got three buttons, or uh, excuse me, you've got five buttons up here. This is your auto start stop button, which you can turn off. So I really like it. They've given you a physical button for that. This one turns your camera on or off, and you can check out the different views we have. Got the 360 view, which is awesome. Okay, over here are your hazards. This one here has to do with trail control. This turns trail control on or off. And basically, trail control is gonna allow you to set your speed, uh, basically like a cruise control, and then allow you to um, you know, concentrate on, this, on the steering and the braking. But when you push it over, if you look at the dashboard, there it goes. Trail control enabled, then you use the set buttons over here to increase or decrease the speed. And of course you need to be in drive to do that. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that off. And then the last button over here is the traction control. All right, moving on down, I'm gonna go to the left a little bit because there's some really cool features down here. Um, this is your four wheel drive selector. Basically you have two high, four automatic, four high and four low and a locking rear differential right here. Now, uh, down here, you've got the trailer brake control, but this is the one I wanted to talk about for a second. Um, this comes with the Copilot 360, which this comes with, and it comes with the Assist Plus part of that package. And um, I believe it's called an 802A upgrade on the Raptor. So <laughs> if you're not good at backing up trailers, you, you, I think you're really gonna like this. Um, so basically what you do, you, you have to make some markings on your trailer. You have to put in some measurements, but basically when you're ready to back up with the trailer attached, you turn this knob instead of the wheel and you turn it the direction you want the trailer to go. And then it automatically does what it needs to do with the real steering wheel to make the trailer go that direction. I think that's going to be a really neat feature and I've not seen it on any other vehicle besides Ford's. So I, I really like that. I think it's a, a no, novel idea. All right, coming back up here, let's talk for a minute about the, uh, the infotainment screen. I'm gonna turn the camera off. This has a Copilot 360 Assist Plus. So here's what you basically you have on here. Up in here, I know this is a little hidden by this uh, yellow tag here, but this is your pass, driver and passenger temperatures. And I like it that Ford has stuck that right up there so it's really easy to see time of course outside temperature and then your home screen button okay we have two pages of icons and up here you've got sound clock bluetooth a uh, phone sirius xm navigation mobile apps and then the ford pass connect and then if we swipe over general the 911 assist that can call uh, rob mentioned that um before but if there's an accident it can automatically dial 911 for you Automatic updates, like most cars nowadays, you don't have to go to the dealership to upgrade your update your, your audio system. There's information on your vehicle, the display screen itself, voice control, and of course, valet mode. All right, now moving on down here, there are some physical controls for the media player. For instance, you have volume, which is just a rotary dial. I do like it that the numbers show up in the screen. I, 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 I know, I, I like graphics and I think that's neat. Power button, of course, here on off. 
And then you have your media sources right here. And it just switches back and forth between them. And then, uh, of course, a cursor right or left to switch stations, uh, switch songs. And then, of course, the physical memory buttons. And then you do have a physical tune button if you're on the radio. You can just see that it automatically starts scrolling. All right, so here are your physical climate controls. If you want on an auto, you can click it here. And, of course, if you click it again, it doesn't shut off the auto. But if you hit the fan, and, again, the numbers display on the screen, which I like, you can, you can turn off the auto that way. And otherwise, you, you've got your, uh, the basic physical controls are your power on off, your defroster, your recirculatory system, max AC, regular AC, and then your mode setting, and then uh, the rear defroster. Okay, this does come with heated and cooled seats, and let me tell you, the cooled seats really work well. Now, it's only 66 degrees, but boy, did I feel it on the way over. Three-stage cooling and three-stage heating. All right, down below here, you have two USB ports along with a nice, uh, fairly deep storage tray, which I really like. Okay, and then uh, if you come back up here right next to the shifter, there's another long storage. Okay, it would work well for pencils, pens. Uh, might even be able to set a, a smartphone in there um, that will hold it sideways. Two cup holders down here. And then, of course, on your uh, shifter here, you do have... Um, the button, of course, is in the, is in, in the front to pull. Let's see if I can see that here. There it is. Okay, and of course, you have the normal uh, options. Um, you have drive, and then, of course, manual. These will light up at night. Uh, if you use manual, then you'll want to use this as your shifter. It's kind of the same thing I have on my Explorer. Or you can use the paddle shifters, which I think probably most people would use anyways. Down here, you have your lane keeping assist button. So if I turn that on, you can see the guidelines go on and off around the adaptive cruise control. Let's take a look at the center console here for a minute. And it is massive. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, huge, long tray. Um, and then of course, a coin, um, Coin storage right there. You've got a little extra storage over here, a little extra pocket right here. Um, nice sticky grip. Not not like sticky to your fingers, but things won't slide on it very much. I, I like that surface. And then just sort of a, a cave is maybe what you call this. It's, it's huge. Um, <laughs> there's, there's, it's hitting me in the elbow. If I put my arm flat, it's past my elbow. So it is a deep storage. And then you have a 12 volt outlet on the right front part of it. Okay. On the inside cover, Ford Owls does something here. Um, this, so they've got pen holders built right in. And then, of course, there's a little, um, you notice a little divot right here. This is for bringing your power cord out, and it's on both sides. All right. Now, over here on the right, you have two different power sources. You have got a 12-volt uh, outlet, and then you have got a 110-volt, 400-watt max uh, household outlet. And then over here, you've got... It's kind of neat. You know, they this kind of caves in right here, and it's got this nice trim piece in here. Okay? The glove compartment itself, okay? Not overly huge. However, uh, Ford has put a separate little cubby up here for all of your uh, driver's manuals so that you have full access to the box itself. You have an automatic dimming rear view mirror. So up here, you have your dome light buttons here and here. You can turn all of the interior lights on with this button. This one will allow you to cancel the lights coming on when the doors are opened or allow them. This is your uh, panoramic sunroof, uh, open and close. This is your, this opens the shade for your panoramic sunroof. This closes it. And of course, we already talked about that one. And then back here, you have seven, uh, six auxiliary, auxiliary buttons that are already pre-wired for you. And then over here, you have your power sliding rear window. All right, so here on, on the passenger side of the 2019 um, Raptor, 
Um, the door, of course, is pretty much the same here. We've got massive storage amounts in the door. You're banging all the speaker there. A little bit of storage again below the door handle. And then this one comes with the same 10-way power seat. And then here again is this extra storage on the side of the console that I really, really like. All right, step into the back of the 2019 Raptor. See the door follows the same uh, pattern as the front doors with a nice little trim piece in the middle there. A little extra storage down here. A little smaller area for storage, but the doors are a little bit smaller. Uh, and But you do have a bottle storage and ample storage here for a rear door. Okay, this is kind of what the back looks like. There are two seat back pockets, which I like. And then what you can do down here is you can actually take these seats and just lift them straight up. It is a 60-40 split, okay? So I'll show you that in a second. All right, so here we go, and I just lifted up the, the, the 40 portion. And you can see you can get access to uh, the power inverter down here. And uh, ours, of course, has some uh, floor mats still wrapped in plastic here. Right here, um, you have got a 12-volt outlet. You have got a 110-volt, 400-watt max household plug-in. And then, on top of that, you have two USBs. So they've really loaded the back end out as far as uh, power outlets. And you have uh, two stage heated seats on the outboard rear seats. Okay. And then, of course, the cup holders up here that I mentioned. Let me put this seat down. In order to do that, you do have to pull, and then it'll come down. So it's just I did that with one finger. That was really easy to do. You can pull the center armrest down, and you can pull the cup holder out, and you can have additional cup holders if you want. The, uh, the panoramic roof back here, you know, I kind of called it a sunroof earlier, and really I should have called it a panoramic roof because it is way, way larger than a sunroof. Um, but that, that is just, that's really nice. Uh, up here, you've got some LED lights and a uh, clothes hanger and they're on both sides as well as uh, grab handles okay so now let's talk for a minute about room all right so well, i think one of the reasons pickups are so popular especially like super cabs and crew cabs uh is that they just they're so spacious on the inside and you have i, I would say as much space in the rear as you do in the front of this raptor uh it's pretty amazing uh, very comfortable. I mean, you could fit three people in here, um, and I doubt you'd be you'd be touching the legs very much. Um, it's just ample. So here we go. Whew. Huge space. Okay, I have. I mean, it's it's six inches or better. Headroom. Okay, even with this line ring, because the the uh, panoramic roof has has ended at this point, I still have a couple inches of headroom. Okay. And the seats are very comfortable between having this armrest right here and then this armrest over here on the door. It is an extremely comfortable seat. Okay, so my favorite thing on the 2019 Ford F-150 Raptor, it's a styling feature. Here it is this hip line on the bed, the fender for the bed as it curves up over the fuel filler door and then back and it just kind of disappears out the back right above the tail light that okay the reason i like this is i think this is one of the cleanest layouts i've seen you've got all the basic icons that go across the the top of the um the screen so if i go over to here okay now all i have to do is press okay and now i can scroll through all those features okay then i can switch to the next tab without having to go to an extra menu and that system is my favorite thing. 